Right then, another uh, interesting vlog and a little bit of collaboration going on. So, as you can see, uh, this is a full engine build that's going on. Paul's just about ready to start throwing it together. This is for Misha from Apex over at the Nürburgring. We'll put a link to his channel or channels or whatever. And uh, we've got a playlist going on for his uh, ring tractor as well. Ring tractor V2, I believe, because the other one got smashed up. But basically, he gave us a task. Originally, it was going to be a race engine, but that's been pulled back a little bit now. It's going to be a, a track day engine. But basically, he wants as much power as he can, little smoke, and as much reliability as possible. So everything you can't have all together. So we're just going to do what we can do. He drove the City Go. And he, he had some sort of comments on that. And I don't think we're going to get it tons better drivability wise than that we are getting and getting the power that he wants. It's 300 plus needs to be what happens really. So we'll see what we can do. <clears throat> we're going to build it as good as we can, as strong as we can with all the best equipment and all the best components that we've got. And then he'll send the car over to us. We'll get it all fitted, get it all working and go from there. So this is just getting put together now because we've got the time to do it. And then, uh, yeah, when uh, travel is a little bit easier and the restrictions are lifted, we'll get it put in. And then hopefully it does a nice, uh, nice lap time around the ring. So, we've not really got any particular order other than Paul's laid it out where he needs it. So, the block, that's been honed. It's not of a size ball. We've kept it 1.9 because I don't like going to the two litres when you're pushing them really hard like to keep the cylinder wall thickness, but it's been honed a little bit bigger, skimmed, cleaned, everything right We're gonna get a final wipe down before it all goes completely together. Also got the rocker cover, all the little bits and pieces. The oil pump, this is a used one, but we take them all to bits and check they're all fine. And if the tolerances are perfect, we don't bother putting a new one in because there's just no real need to. Pistons, they're where we probably spend the most amount of time. So we've machined the pockets a tiny bit deeper on these. We've left the bowl standard size, but we took off all the sharp edges. We open up the galleries for the oilways, and then we coat them with this gold coating and underneath we're coating that allows the heat to come out a bit better as well. And we weight match them all We 0.04 grams, if I remember correctly. The scales are good down to 0.02, but generally go to about 0.04, something like that which sometimes you take a bit of material out of the pin to do that if there's quite a discrepancy. So that's that. The crank, that's just a balanced crank. We've not done anything too crazy with that. If we're doing it, if we really want to spend a bit of time on them, we can get them balanced with a flywheel and stuff like that, but we've not gone to that extreme with this one because it's not really going to make much difference. Also new piston rings, they're all going to be gapped perfectly, which a lot of people forget to do that. So check your ring gaps. We're not going to tell you what they need to be because then it starts blowing by in your moan or it rips the top of the piston off in your moan still, so we didn't tell you what they are. That's up to you to decide. Squirters, there's a specific part number that we use, it's the largest ones, and we open them up as well. ARP main studs, always got to have them. ARP rod bolts, they're a good idea. Roston H beam connecting rods, definitely a good idea. And then we've got the uh, standard sort of these are all a, what they call a sputter bearing which have been upgraded for most petrol engines but the top the top one on the connecting rod's got a different coating on it which takes more pounding which is what normally fails and just all genuine service bits full new cam belt genuine water pump don't fit chinese ones they're not worth hassle everything else has been cleaned up oil cooler kit we've not chose which gasket we're going to use yet but from the we, we did a dry build before, we had the pistons machined, and we took a tiny bit of top of the pistons and from our measurements we're going to need a one OLED gasket and we're going to be a little bit below where that's going to be, but we might end up with a two OLED, we'll see. I always like to have, not go too thick, a lot of people just put a three hole straight in but that's how you make a car smoke. You want to keep the egg gasket as tight as you can, but you also don't want the pistons hitting the head, which happens often. So random bits of bolts and stuff like that. Quite a few of these are new. So obviously the main crank bolts and the ones that hold the water pump and stuff like that on a new and oil pump and stuff like that. 
iron air lifters, which these are not in the box, but they're the uh, DLC coated ones. ARP head studs. We've got the 74 degree thermostat, bit of ARP grease. This is the race cam that we do, the plus seven one, and that kit comes with the lifters and the bearings and the bolts that you need. Upgraded dual valve springs, so they'll stop it fluttering away. And then we've got a ported head, which this one is one from another project from a while ago <coughs> that we only used a little bit of. So we've put this back into this build. That's got the big valves. We've not gone for the dimples on this one because this one worked pretty well and we know it's going to be good. So we've left it at that. Then we've got new injector harness, all the bolts. That's for the rocker cover. Rockers, you always make sure on these PDs that these are in place we see a lot of these where they've popped out and then you get an oil pressure and then you you start wearing your injectors out for some reason and then we've got off the top of it, i think these are 120s these are the 120 injectors i have to double check on that now we're going to do hundreds but then we're going to do 120s can't remember which one it was the hundreds of the newer ones the 120 seem to work pretty well as well so we'll see so yeah we've got all this in a few hours this should turn into an engine and then we've got to do what we normally do where we warm it up, torque the air bolts down, get it all ready. Then we've, we've got Misha's gearbox as well, a six speed with a diff and we're going to upgrade the, the fork. Can't remember what we did last time we built it, but there's a fourth gear support that we're going to put on there as well. So that'll be full engine, gearbox, clutch, flywheel, everything all ready. We've got the 28 turbo to go on there as well, GTD 28. It's a full kit. The only thing that's missing is the manifold. We're doing this on a V-band as well because these are a little bit easier to swap if you have any problems. We're missing the manifold. That got lost in the post between the quarters and here or the other way around. I can't remember which way around now. But basically, it's missing, along with some pistons for my uh, T5 engine, which we should have been doing a video on ages ago and we're waiting on them. But anyway, is what it is. So we've got the gaskets and everything we need for that. Shallow sump, which has got the steel bottom on in case you whack some curves on that one of our custom inlet manifolds and then we've got all the turbo inlet pipe and our silicons and everything there so it's going to be a complete unit all ready to drop in i think he's still got the engine mounts and stuff at his end but basically we'll have it all ready to drop in and then we've got wherever they are they're kicking about somewhere we've got a s3 intercooler an alloy, rad alloy radiator and a brand new aircon condenser because he still wants to keep his air conditioning which i think is a bad idea but he wants to so he gets what he wants so yeah everything's ready to get built hopefully it's not too long before we can get it here and get it fitted but i think this video will just be the build and everything else so check out his channel we've done a little bit of work together and quite a bit of business has come from germany off the back of what we've done so hopefully it works out good again and uh, yeah big job.
So while we wait for Misha's manifold to come back, then we can get all the engine completely built. This was the gearbox that we built for him a while ago. He's got the diesel geek shifter on there, which are crazy expensive. But the one thing I realized, I'm not sure why we did it at the time. I think there was a discussion and we decided not to, but we never fitted the fourth gear support. So this literally sandwiches between the casing and then this threads against that and pushes this little bronze insert against sort of between third and fourth gear and that keeps the casing together. Not 100% effective, but definitely helps. So while it's here and it's on the bench, we've got a bit of time waiting. We're gonna get this fired in. Get it started for me.
so Paul's finally got the engine sorted. It took a little bit of extra messing about. Enowin's got the fourth gear support on the gearbox. That's all gone together nice, so that's pretty good. So we're waiting on a couple of little bits from his old engine, the thermostat housing. We've got a 74 degree thermostat to go in that. And then obviously we'll get the oil cool and a couple of pipes and stuff like that. We're going to put his cam cover on because it's got the engine code on there and everything, so it can belt cover, so we'll leave that. But at the minute, we've got all brand new, genuine stuff. And then you can see the manifold, 28 turbo. Like I said, this is on a V-band. And then we've got the nice downpipe to go on there as well. So it should be pretty easy to get in. So we're not sure when we're going to get the car. Hopefully it's sometime soon. And then we'll get it in, get it running, get it tested. And we should be all good. So check out his channel. Check out the videos we did previously about his stuff. And uh, yeah, hopefully it works out pretty good. Can't wait to see uh, what ends up getting done with it. Because Misha's got a lot of followers that want to see a lot of this guy. It seems to get quite a good reception whenever he mentions it. So we shall see.